Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this narration of the web novel All is Fairy in War, taken from Reddit with the author's approval. If you're new to the series, there is a link to the playlist down below. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. I am Empress, the ruler of a thousand planes, the one who has dominion over an almost uncountable number of beings, ever expanding in their variety. I am the one who has the responsibility for shepherding the fairy race, so that they may enjoy the ever more prosperous future, no matter the cost to other races. So, it has been the same for the Emperor before me, and the Empress before him, and so on. I am the inheritor to a dynasty that has lasted for close to a million years, the stewardess of the greatest civilization to ever exist. I have ruled for 11 centuries, and in that time, I have expanded my civilization greatly, just as those before me have. Even though we occasionally encounter those who are stubborn and headstrong enough to submit to my superior role, no one civilization, world, or culture has managed to repel us. The Orions are a prime example of that. Such is the might of the fairy people who I am ordained to guide. And so, when I was recently informed by the Council of Acquisition about a new, unconquered plane, I only did what I've always done in these situations. I let slip the dogs of war. And now that I've done so, this new people will surely come to be under my dominion. Because that is the way that it has always been, and always will be. Months ago, a Council of Acquisition informed me about these... Cubans, and how the plane they inherited was barely any Aether. Yet, in spite of this disability, they've managed to utilize Aether extremely efficiently, more so than any other people that we've ever encountered. Recent reports also show that even though they are larger and physically stronger than us, they are still a peaceful people, as evidenced by the amount of cooperation needed to utilize the tiny amount of Aether that they have. A strong, smart, innovative, and peaceful people. They will surely be the most fruitful conquest that we've had in a long, long while. Perhaps the best ever, if things go well. And things have always gone well, so why am I feeling this growing pit in my stomach? Even though Admiral Harvey has yet to report from the first world of theirs that we've most certainly conquered by now, that should be of no cause of concern. After all... In a place with minimal aether, there's bound to be some communication issues. Yes, that's it. Communication issues are why he hasn't responded back yet. Even so, this doesn't help alleviate my concern much. As Empress, it is paramount that I maintain my composure at all times, regardless of what has happened, for I am an example for all to look up to. Thankfully... Within the last few months, some intrepid fairies have provided me with something that they brought from, from a far-off world, which they call chocolate. Its heavenly taste helps to calm me down, and its velvety texture elevates my mood considerably. It, along with the grape wine that they've brought for me, have only helped me make better decisions. Major decisions should only be made when calm, after all. And the order to invade had been given when I gorged myself in chocolate and wine, so I was most certainly the calmest possible state. Consequently, I definitely made the right choice. Yes, I most definitely made the right choice. So, um, why am I feeling so nervous? A blinding light woke Admiral Harvey from his stoop, causing him to jolt up. However, he found himself struck to a chair, which in turn was melded to the floor. He took in his surroundings carefully. Thoroughly, considering his options that he had available. As far as he could tell, the room that he was in had no door or windows. It was the starkest white that he'd ever seen, which only served to unsettle him. After a while, he attempted to feel for any surrounding aether, when the realization of where he was suddenly hit him. How the feck am I still alive? Have I... have I been captured by the humans... Seemingly, in answer to his question, a pitch-black rectangular hole appeared in the wall in front of him. He eyed it intensely, feeling both apprehension and indignation at the situation he found himself in. Do they intend to interrogate me? If so, they're out of luck. I have been trained to withstand any kind of pain. 
He continued to watch the opening in the wall for a while, until finally the silhouette was visible. The first thing he noticed was that even though it shared the same body shape as a fairy, it was tall. Very tall indeed. That has to be at least five feet tall, if not more. If so, I guess it's certain that I've been captured by the humans. Training, don't fail me now. The human walked into the room, carrying with it a kind of briefcase. The human in question was dressed in a fairly simple baby blue suit with white highlights. Upon waving his hand, the table and chair materialized in front of him, which only put the admiral on higher alert. I can't access any aether from here, yet he managed to summon a table and chair with a wave of his hand. Is this what's possible with a higher aether efficiency? The human patted down his suit, gently put down the briefcase, and proceeded to sit down. A cup of water materialized out of nowhere, and the human proceeded to drink it. What in the world is he doing? It's not very intimidating, that's for sure. A couple of minutes passed before the human deigned to look at the admiral, whose irritation was building up. Admiral Harvey, I presume, he queried with a deeper voice than the admiral was expecting. I guess that what comes with size. You've got that right, human. What do you want with me? The admiral replied, putting on his most commanding voice. The human cleared his throat before continuing. I am David Mosen, and I hope to get to know you over the next few days. I take it that you aren't too comfortable. Unfortunately, we've had to restrain you to that chair as we were unsure how you would react to waking up here. However, we can remove them once you feel like it. We want to cooperate with you after all. And a good cooperative relationship is built on manners, wouldn't you say? The Admiral stared at the so-called David for a few seconds. Incredulousness written all over his features. Huh? What the feck is he on about? What is he playing at? David smiled at him before continuing with his speech. It's as I say, Admiral. Though I suppose in here you're not an Admiral. Do you mind if I call you Kane? Or would you like me to call you Mr. Harvey? How the feck do you know my first name? Blurted out the Admiral with alarm in his voice. David grinned once again before replying. Now, now. I know you fairies have a tradition of only friends and family addressing you by your first name. Yet, do you really feel the need to do so in here? Besides, it wasn't too hard to find out your details. The bead of sweat ran down the admiral's back. So that's what this is going to be. Instead of torturing me, they're going to threaten those close to me. How on earth did they find out about me, though? Okay, fine, call me Kane, but I have a few questions of my own. The human positively grinned upon hearing this, which only threw the admiral further off. Of course, um, we humans believe in give and take, after all. It would be unfair to leave you with an unanswered questions, especially considering that we'll be asking questions of our own. David waved his hand once again, which caused the Admiral's restraints to evaporate into thin air. He lifted his briefcase onto the table and delicately undid the clasp. He then turned the briefcase to face the Admiral and opened it gently. The contents of the briefcase certainly weren't what he expected, as evidenced by his jaw hanging open. Cold vapor wafted off two bottles within the briefcase. The condensation on the bottles looked absolutely heavenly in that moment, yet the Admiral did not touch them. What kind of trick is this? I am aware that you are partial to these drinks, Kane, so I took the trouble to prepare them for you. A Glenfiddich and a gold glass of Coke, all for you. David sat there for a while. Yet, when the Admiral didn't make a move, he pushed the briefcase towards him. I suggest you take a drink, Kane. You're awfully thirsty, after all. Plus, sir, I would hate for you to be left wanting for something that I can provide. The Admiral didn't reply, instead choosing to remunerate on what had just occurred. He quickly realized the magnitude of what was going on and so he chose to ask a question in return. How long have you infiltrated for us for, and how deep does it go? David grinned once again before answering. Around twenty years now, and for us how deep, you should be able to answer that. We are suppliers of your favorite drinks, after all. Even after hearing this bombshell answer, the Admiral was no more perturbed than before. Instead, a grim realization took hold over him. How am I still alive? 
Instead of answering instantly, David chose to instead pour two glasses and single malt. He pushed one towards the Admiral and took a deep, long sip of the other. He put the glass down before continuing. Inertial dampeners are capable of wonders, Kane. Though, to be fair, much of human technology is. What should have turned you into a fine red mist only knocked you out, which you should be thankful for. Though, we did get your data crystal, so I suppose you paid for the cost of using it on your ship. The Admiral chose to take a deep, long sip, as David had. Years of experience taught him when he was thoroughly beaten. Considering that he didn't have many options, he put the class down and looked at David, who smiled and returned and leaned forwards. We have a few questions of our own, and I'd appreciate it if you answered to the best of your ability. End of chapter. Just a quick shout out to the T5 peeps. Bob the Dragon, Cat Crab Lobster, Data Magnet, Dark Machine, Mezic, Try Again 95, Feudic Yol, Astrea the Dreamer, Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Athelia, Meridian 117, and Jordan Buxmorm. Thank you very much. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are links down below both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.